From stories in ancient mythology to experiments conducted by medical professionals, the goal of immortality has been long sought after, and that is exactly why we are going to be covering the top 10 strange traditions in history that made you immortal. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Brown Saccard Elixir. Charles Edward Brown Saccard is not only the fanciest sounding name, but it's also the name of a French neurologist who lived from 1817 to 1894. In his later life, after a life full of studying and practicing medicine, he was appointed as the professor of experimental medicine, where he stayed until his passing. He made many medical milestones throughout his life and was one of the first to conduct an in depth study of the spinal cord, which is, of course, of the utmost importance for our health. He was also among the first to propose that there are substances that exist in our bloodstream, and those things are what we now know as hormones. This is all to say he made some extremely important medical advancements and was a highly regarded doctor, but of course, we all have our quirks, and this is where Charles comes in. At the age of 70, Charles claimed that he had found a way to increase vitality, rejuvenate, and prolong life. Maybe not achieve full immortality, but still, he thought he was onto something here. The method of doing this was extremely strange as he would inject fluid taken from the nether regions of male animals like dogs and guinea pigs and then inject it into his thighs. Some people even tried this method in a sort of DIY situation and they claimed it worked. In the most unsurprising news ever, the medical society was super skeptical and conducted experiments and found that there was no actual effect. Who could have possibly seen that coming? In our number 9 spot today we have anger Greek god. Many people generally look at immortality as a good thing or a positive. In fact, it's well documented throughout history of people trying to achieve immortality, but in the times of ancient Greece, it was sometimes given as a punishment. In Greek mythology, there are plenty of times where a god would get mad at a mortal and the punishment would grant them everlasting life, but that included a punishment that would literally never end. Like the perfect example is the mortal king Sisyphus. He was always trying to be a smart aleck and would often attempt to barter with the gods rather than simply bow down to them, and at that point, all the gods were super fed up with him. In the end, they eventually cursed him to live forever in Hades, where he has to constantly roll a boulder up a hill. Once at the top, the boulder rolls back down and the process repeats. Legend has it that he's still pushing the boulder up that hill to this day. In our number 8 spot today, we have Cinnabar. Cinnabar is the most common ore of mercury and it has a long history in ancient cultures, but of course, there's one big issue with it. It causes mercury poisoning. This is exactly why it's super strange that this was once the central ingredient to the Taoist elixir of immortality. The elixir, which was called Huandan, or the reverted elixir, was basically created because it was believed that certain materials, such as cinnabar or gold, when ingested, would instill some of their qualities into the body and then rid the body of any of the imperfections that cause mortality. Of course, we now know that unfortunately most of the precious items in this elixir were highly poisonous and they ended up doing the exact opposite of what they intended to do. Many people died, including Tang Dynasty emperors, and it is said that this is part of what caused the shift from trying to find outside substances to create immortality to finding a way to harness one's natural energy in order to gain immortality. In our number 7 spot today, we have Ambrosia. Said to be the drink of the Greek gods with a flavor of honey, this beverage was delivered to the Olympians by doves, and this is what gave them their immortality. This is an important substance in mythology that is seen many times. Sometimes in the stories, people were given the privilege of drinking it, like in the story of Heracles. But sometimes others would try to steal it, and like we learned before, do not anger the gods or else you'll find yourselves punished like Tantalus. Forever trapped, hungry, and thirsty, standing in a pool of water he can't drink, under fruit that he can't eat. And some mortals in the story were only teased with the possibility of immortality just to be turned away at the last second like the hero Tydeus. He was going to be made immortal by Athena, the goddess, but then she caught him eating human brains, so she decided, hmm, better not. Mythology is weird. I didn't make this up. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is one of the most well-known pieces of Christian mythology. It is said to be a cup or bowl that Jesus drank out of during the Last Supper. Of course, people were trying to get their hands on this relic, and to make it even more revered, it is said to be the vessel in which Joseph of Arimathea caught his blood while he was on the cross. That's heavy stuff, and it's the reason why King Arthur and his knights traveled in search of the Holy Grail. Here's the catch with this thing, though. Only the purest of souls were able to grasp it, and not many 
many of us can admit that we're the purest of souls. That is why when only one man was able to touch it, it is said that he gained immortality through it. If that was me, I'd tell him to prove it. I mean, real easy to say it when you're the only one who can touch it. I'm just saying, proof or it didn't happen. Legend says this guy's still eating Mr. Noodles out of it to this day. In our number 5 spot today we have Becoming a Vampire. Throughout history and literature and other forms of pop culture we've seen a few different variations of vampires, none of which exist, but that wasn't always the belief. There were times when people really believed that these things existed and whether it was the solitary reclusive kind that can't go in the sunlight or the ones that sparkle when doing so, most vampire legends assume that vampires are immortal and that they don't age. Vampires can be killed however and there's actually a few different ways. Sometimes it's from the sunlight like we talked about, sometimes it's from not getting enough of the blood they so desperately crave, and sometimes it's by getting a wooden stake through the heart, which is not only effective on vampires but also regular people. The most difficult part about this method of becoming immortal is that you not only have to find a vampire, which is more difficult than you think, but you also have to find one that's willing to leave you alive. Needle in a haystack here, but I wish you the best of luck. In our number 4 spot today we have Eating a Mermaid. This definitely is on the top of the list when it comes to the strange. In Japanese mythology there is a mermaid creature known as a ningyo, which is described as a cross between a carp and a monkey. These creatures lived in the sea and they usually brought bad luck and stormy weather with them, and if one washed up on shore it was thought to be an omen of war. This leaves me wondering why anyone would ever want to be near one, but as legend has it, a girl known as the 800 nun, one day her father accidentally brought her some of the meat of this creature and she ate it and then she was cursed with immortality. It was called a curse because she was horribly sad for many years after having to watch many husbands and children of hers pass away. That would absolutely be a terrible part of immortality. After being terribly sad for many years, she decided to devote her life to Buddha and become a nun. In the end, because of her whole she was allowed to pass away at the age of 800. I guess maybe immortality isn't as attractive as some of us once thought. In our number 3 spot today we have the golden apples. We hear a lot about the golden apples in Greek mythology, but in Norse mythology they are actually quite an important and often discussed item. The golden apples actually needed to be continually eaten by the Norse gods in order to maintain their immortality. The apples also supplied the gods with their strength as well as their forever youth. The orchard that contained these apples was looked over by the goddess of spring, Ida. The apples are extremely important to the mythology and in one story, when the goddess gets tricked into giving herself and the apples over to Loki, the gods immediately grew old and weak, but luckily she was returned and everyone's youth was restored. This led people to search for these golden apples at one point, but even if they were to find one of these magic apples, you need a constant supply in order to maintain your immortality, and that might be more difficult than you think. In our number 2 spot today we have the Fountain of Youth. We have all been searching for the Fountain of Youth for centuries and that's super weird since every beauty company ever claims to have placed it within their moisturizers. One of the most famous stories of this search for the Fountain of Youth is that of Juan Ponce de Leon who is a Spanish explorer. It is said that he headed out and managed to find Florida and although it is thought that the adventure was meant to be a search for gold, he was also searching for the Fountain of Youth. This fountain is said to heal the drinker of any known ailments and it will restore drinkers to the peak of their youth. It is believed that Juan may have had some type of an ailment that he was looking to heal, which is why he set out on his journey. It isn't clear whether or not he ever found it, but it is presumed he didn't as there's no evidence that he's still alive. In our number 1 spot today we have the Philosopher's Stone. Turns out this thing wasn't just a Harry Potter relic. It was based on a real thing people believed could grant the power of immortality. It has been long believed that the Philosopher's Stone could be made out of ordinary substances that exist everywhere, but we just don't have the information needed in order to recognize them. This is why in the first Harry Potter movie Voldemort is searching for the stone. He's trying to find a way to live again and he thinks the stone is the key. It is thought that this may have been created by a man named Nicholas Flamel, who yes is also a character in Harry Potter, but he was also a real person too. Nicholas Flamel lived from 1330 to 1418 and he was a successful French bookseller. What's curious however is that about 200 years after his death there began to be texts that surfaced that were attributed to him. According to these texts, Nicholas had learned secrets of alchemy from Jewish alchemists while traveling Spain, and it is said that during this time he acquired the original copy of the book of Abramelin the Mage. It was then claimed that Nicholas was the one who held the elixir of life as well as the secrets of transmutation, and it was also claimed that he is probably still alive somewhere. This is exactly why people began searching for the Philosopher's Stone, although it doesn't appear as if anyone has found the proper recipe, I guess, except for Nicholas. Alright, 
right guys, that has been our list for today. I hope you find one of these and live forever. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye.